Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I got my Bonko Antelope painted. I did an experiment um, just because I thought it would be fun and I'm not going to recommend that you do it the same way I do. I really was just playing around, but I really like the way the horns came out. I'm, I used this um, soft gel, what's it called? Soft gel. And I put it on right over the paper mache. The paper mache was made with just with brown paper and a cooked flour and water paste. And it's the same as, as newspaper, it just isn't bleached. Overall, even though um, I think maybe a more traditional way to paint would have been better for the bottom part, I still really like him. I also want to mention before I get started showing you how I did this, make sure that you look up Bongo Antelope and then I'm going to put a couple of links down below for antelopes that have a head that is very much the same shape, but the horns are different. Um, one of them has horns that look like if you could do it just by wrapping these horns with a like a clothesline rope, <laughs> some really thin rope. If, if you did the rope kind of thing, it would take a long time to get the paper mache over there because you had to put it over every single one of those little lumps, but it would look really cool. And there's another one that I can't remember the name of it, but it's just got amazing horns. Just, just, in, just amazing. I, I kind of want to make one of those too. <laughs> And you could do it with this pattern just with, by altering the horns. The horns are actually separate. You, know, you just put them on after they're made. And so it would be really easy to, to change them. But let me go ahead and show you how I painted this guy. Uh, remember, I <laughs> I was experimenting. So don't think that you have to do yours my way. Make sure that you do look for photographs of bongo antelopes. Don't necessarily just use mine as a model because... I was playing around. <laughs> Let me show you how I did it. I started the paper mache just right around the bottom. And I I know I've said this before, but <laughs> don't put paper mache on the middle because flat cardboard really likes to warp. I'm just using this brown paper that came with an Amazon.com box. And it's just about the same uh, thickness as regular newspaper. So if that's what you have, go ahead and use it. So now he's got his paper mache on there. So I got out my brushes, Aqualon Wisp, that's what it's called. I'm using the brush to put that soft gel over the, right directly over the paper mache because I was hoping that some of that nice brown would show through in the end if I let the, the gel dry clear and then put some um, transparent glazes over it. It worked really well on the horns. I really like the way it looked on the horns. If I did this again, I would use a, a, a white gesso or a, just a, a latex primer over the face and the ears and go ahead and do what I'm doing now along the uh, horns because I really like that. But I would paint more traditionally <laughs> on the face. I would use the same colors, but they would come out a little bit more clear because the white would be under them and I would still use that wispy brush to put uh, some layers of fur over the especially over the the brown and the white parts because I think that would look really nice. So the gel is now all dry and I do have um, a piece of cardboard here that I played around with some colors. Um, these are basically for the face but I want to um, get the horn color first and I haven't played with that yet. That's just a really light gray made with some um, burnt umber and some ultramarine blue and white, lots of white. And then I added some golden glazing liquid just so that the, so it would be able to uh, show a little bit of the brown under it. I'm really liking the way the lines are showing up on the, the horns the water is letting the the paint kind of seep into the um, dips that were put there by the gel. Those lines aren't being put on by me right now. They're actually um, kind of being added because of the texture underneath, which I think is pretty cool. Now I'm going to be using this right here. <laughs> it's basically this. It's a uh, burnt umber with a little bit of burnt sienna added to it to give it a red tone. Then I'm adding a little bit of the glazing liquid to slow down the drying time and make a little bit more transparent. 
and I'm going to use a wet brush. I'm looking at the photograph from the Cincinnati Zoo and the red comes right here and then I'm going to put all of his neck even though there is going to be an area under his chin that has some black uh, striping but I'm going to put the black over the red I think because that just might look better. I'm painting the nose area a pure black. It's got just a teensy bit of the of this color mixed in just to warm it up, but it's pretty much all black and I haven't added any glazing liquid or water to it because I want this I don't want any of the brown paper to show through on this. And I'm making the edges deliberately kind of weird because that's that's what the nose looks like that I'm looking at. Like I said, every single bongo antelope is going to have different color patterns. So just uh, go look for some on Google, do an image search, and find the one that you like really a lot. Okay, now I'm going to mix in a little bit more of the brown stuff and a little bit of the uh, glazing liquid to slow down the drying time. I think I have the black pretty well blocked in. It's not quite dark enough and a little bit more of the brown paper is showing through than I really wanted. So I will go back over that and fix it. But I think it's coming along. I'm still not, still not sure about this. <laughs> we'll see. I love the colors though. The upper part of his eyelid is a really soft, almost well sort of a creamy color it's not really white and it's got the same color down here then this kind of follows the side of his cheekbone and then down here hmm, interesting it needs a little bit of black following right up to his ear and then the brown behind it. Mixed in quite a lot more white. Where the spots go really depends on both which animal you're looking at, you know, individual animal, but there's also quite a few different variations or species of bongo antelope. So make sure that you do look for them online because they'll put their spots in a different place. I mixed a nice warm orange using alizarin crimson and cadmium yellow light. And I used that for the iris on the eyes. After the nice warm orange was dry, I went back over it with that little wispy brush and um, used a lighter version of the same color. I just added just a little bit of white to it. And then I did add that reflection spot too, of course. There were some brown and black parts that I hadn't painted before because I wasn't quite sure where they went. And so I went back and fixed that. And I did go back over the white parts with uh, that wispy brush just to give it a little bit more interest. And I, basically I did that because uh, the experiment of using the, the gel first, making the fur textures and then having that show up just didn't work very well under the white. Now I know I should wait, but I want to try these eyelashes so bad. <laughs> I did the eyes really fast. Um, mostly because they're, they're so small, it's really hard for me to do real detail like that when I'm holding it so far away. But I think that the eyelashes are going to make a big difference anyway. <laughs> I'm going to use this stuff just to hold them on temporarily. And then I think that when I add the varnish, um, it'll capture the edges of the eyelashes. I would use the E6000 glue to hold them on, but I read the um, label <laughs> and it didn't look like it's a 
a real good idea to be using it in the house. I'm not sure it's a good idea to use them anywhere. I got these eyelashes. They're, I think they're for drag queen type people. Um, they're, they're just huge. A lot of African animals have really long eyelashes. And I'm sure that that's because they need to keep the sun out of their eyes. And not just to be pretty. And the very last thing I did before putting a matte varnish on it, which I haven't quite done yet, is to put a coat of fingernail polish over those eyes just to make them really bright. So now he's all done and he's hanging out with some of his African friends over there. I am going to put some of this varnish on him though. This is um, a really nice varnish. It never yellows or anything. I, I just really love this stuff. And it's really a matte finish. So the only thing that's going to be shining on the antelope is his eyes. I think that's going to be really nice. Now if you make an antelope, whether you use my pattern or whether you make it from scratch, please come back to the Daily Sculptors page on my website and show it off. We would love to see how it comes out. So go make something and then come back and visit us at ultimatepapermache.com. We'll see you there.